All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. The family of General Hospital alum Johnny Wachter speaks out following his tragic death. At General Hospital, Carly walks into Brennan's room. He smiles and says, Another visit. She says she had to come as she heard he stabbed himself just to see her. She asks to see the scar, but he says it's bandaged, but it's pretty epic. She asks what really happened. He says a thug jumped him in the showers. Carly isn't buying this as he's a spy. And he'd never let himself be vulnerable. He jokes maybe he just wanted to see her. She doubts that and asks what's really going on. Jack tells her it's complicated and she won't understand. Carly doesn't like being made to feel stupid, and he is sorry for that. As he does not believe she is stupid, he says he's a spy. These are spy games, and everyone has a motive and plays fast and loose with the truth. He says nothing is as it appears. She asks if he's saying he's not guilty. Grennan says he hasn't been tried for what he's been accused of as they fear what will come out in court. She knows he's not innocent. And Brennan says neither is who he's playing against, including Anna. He admits some of the things Anna has accused him of he's done, but no one in their world is innocent. He also says she is no spy. Otherwise, she wouldn't have visited him in Pentonville. However, she has no idea what she gave him that day. Carly asks what she could have told him that he didn't already know. Brennan gives her a lesson in espionage and says a good spy never tells. Carly doesn't care what he's up to. All she cares about is her friend Jason finding peace. She asks him to keep Jason out of whatever he's up to. He says he will guarantee her that he won't harm her friend and doubts he'll ever see him as he will be sent back to prison soon. She says perhaps she'll visit him again before that, but he tells her not to. Brennan says, you should stay far away from me. He says people will tell her that he's a bad man and should stay away from him. She says she doesn't listen to people and makes up her own mind. He calls her beautiful and smart. Carly exits his room. At Chase and Brooke Lynn's place, he looks at Gregory's gift and feels he should be doing something, but all he wants to do is sit here. She says that's what he should do then, and she'll unpack their suitcases. There is a knock at the door, and Chase doesn't think he can handle any more sympathy. She says she'll get rid of them, but it turns out to be Tracy. Tracy tells Chase she's sorry about his father and that he was a wonderful man. She also brought them something, some fancy Italian wine. She knows they should be on their honeymoon, so she thought she'd bring a taste of Italy to them. Chase and Brooke Lynn thank her. Brooke Lynn excuses herself to open the wine. Chase tells Tracy he is thankful to her for being a friend to his dad when he needed one. Tracy says that's kind but she'd prefer to skip the platitudes. He says it's not a platitude, it's the truth. She's sorry for offending him. And he's sorry as he's not good at this grief stuff. Tracy admits if it were up to her, she and Gregory wouldn't have been friends. She has acquaintances but few friends. However, caring about Gregory snuck up on her. Chase says his dad did that to people. Tracy calls him warm, engaging, and never self-pitying. She says he faced the end of his life with dignity and courage, and he should be proud of him. Chase is proud of his father, which is why it's killing him that this is all his fault. He says he asked his dad to officiate at the wedding, and it was too much, and that is why. Tracy tells him not to do this to himself. She says his father was over the moon at his wedding, and officiating their wedding is what kept Gregory going these past few weeks. Chase didn't think about it that way. Tracy says he shouldn't punish himself for his father's death. It was sad and unfair, but that's how life is. She says it wasn't anyone's fault. She admits she never heard his father brag, except when it came to his sons. She laughs he never stopped talking about Chase, and it was his one annoying quality. Chase laughs and notes it's the first time he's laughed since he got the news. Brooklyn returns with the wine, and Tracy sees herself out. Chase and Brooklyn enjoy the wine. Chase can't believe how fast everything can change. He knows he is in pain, 
but it must be worse for Finn as dad was the last parent he had. He is sitting here drinking, so how can you blame Finn for doing the same? Brooke Lynn says their situations aren't the same, and Finn is in recovery.